This is Twit. I wanted to ask you about your own directorial work. Uh, you've uh -huh. made two two short films, both of which had some very interesting um, uh, experimental techniques that you used in them it, regarding what we've been talking about on the show. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, absolutely. So while I was at Disney, I got the great fortune of directing a experimental film that we did to test out a new camera. It was a trifocal camera system. Uh, and it was a, 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 a joint effort that was done with both the Fraunhofer Institute, HHI in Berlin, uh, as well as ARI. Uh, and the, the design and the goal was, can we, can we get a better way to shoot stereoscopic content, to, to shoot 3D, uh, without having a standard stereoscopic rig? So can we have someone go out and shoot uh, you know, a movie and supplement it with extra side small cameras uh, that then could pick up the 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 three dimension or the the the, the parallax the parallax if you will and then in the post production process then create your stereoscopic at that point in time where you have a lot more control uh, you know we, ha we actually have a picture of that trifocal camera we can show there uh, yeah is. there it is yeah there's the beauty before we went out and shot it so that's the pristine one that we had in the lab uh, and then uh, by the time <laughs> you get it out on the set. And you put everything else on it, thing it looks like a monster. But it's a prototype, and this was an experimental film that was done to basically shoot with this camera, shoot like you're going to shoot a 2D movie, and then in the post production where you have a lot more control, creating stereo, make a stereo 3D movie. So it was a little little movie called Make Believe, uh, and it was shot in Berlin, and I think it was around 2012 that we shot it over there, uh, and uh, brought it back and and made a complete little short film. Um, that turned out to be a, a wonderful little film about a, a kind of a quirky, quirky science girl that gets laughed at by her classmates. And finally, in the end, she kind of shows them that science is pretty cool because she discovers a new planet up in the sky. So a huh, uh, wow. little thing called make believe. And uh, so we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Hey, and it was you, really the it was really the can forerunner. Can you see that anywhere? Uh, I'm no, sorry. It, 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 it was an experimental film that was done, um, and I, I nobody has any plans, as far as I know, to release it, which is a shame because I think it, it, it'd be a great thing to to get out to the audience. But maybe someday yeah, yeah. that'll change. Um, but it was the baby step to something we call computational cinematography, uh, and this is where you can use camera arrays now instead of a single camera. I, I think of multiple small little cameras to start mm -hmm. capturing uh, light fields. Uh, if you will, uh, right. down and we have to, a we have a picture of that kind of an array as well. Uh, it's called Fraunhofer. Array. Yeah, Fraunhofer. Yeah, Fraunhofer. Siegfried um, Fussel and uh, Frederick Zilli are the guys that are working on this at the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany uh, at Erlangen, and this is right. their design where you can see uh, six cameras here that are all in their little small cameras that are recording at the same time. This allows you to. Uh, pull out the depth information from a scene. It allows you to refocus uh, shots after the fact uh, by having what's called synthetic aperture. Uh, you can also stitch all the cameras together to get high resolution. And you can also work with the, uh, the input f-stops and get high dynamic range at the same time. So this is very, very early days of stuff, but it really is kind of where things are going to instead of having one big large sensor to try to capture new higher resolution everything else um they're really experimenting with these multiple small camera systems and camera arrays and it's very exciting very exciting stuff it's great that great that it's called computational cinematography because yeah. you're doing a lot of computation on the back end in post-production Right. So the idea is, you know, and this scares a lot of the directors of photography and I don't blame them to a certain extent. Um, but the, the idea was you would go out uh, into the, the into the woods and you'd have your truck put up the big camera array. You put the actors in front, you do the scene and you fold it down and you go back and you actually create the images in post-production, you know, using uh, the algorithms and rendering that has become so ubiquitous now on the back end. Um, it's a little scary because, you, you know, you, you, you can kind of see what you've got, but you're really making your images now in the back end. The beauty is, though, you have so much more control. Uh, like you said, you could refocus, you could do zoom ins, you could relight some things. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Mm. But mm. it's going to take some time both for the creative community to get their head around it um, and for uh, the systems to get up to speed. Now, 
Having said that, virtual reality has to have multiple cameras. So already VR is pushing the envelope of these camera arrays. Uh, they just do it in a different place because they put them around in a circle, you know, around to get a three or a sphere in, or a sphere. And so it shoots down, it shoots above and things like that. So right. um, you're going to see, I think, a lot more of these camera arrays coming into use starting with VR, of course, and then moving into maybe even uh, regular production at some point in time. Well, you and I were talking about virtual reality a bit before the show, and and that's a seriously scary thing for, for creatives, I think, because suddenly you, the audience has the option of looking around and, and not everybody will see the same thing. Yeah, you know, all as directors, we're kind of egomaniacs. We want you to look exactly where we want you to look. You know, it's a fascinating <laughs> experience, right? Uh, and now, you know, so I got a beautiful love scene going on in a VR thing, and there's some bird up in the sky. And instead of looking at the lovers, you're looking up at the bird going, will he fall out or not? So, <laughs> so our engineer, John, found a picture of the uh, trifocus camera, trifocal camera, out in the field. Let's take a look at that. That is... Uh, yeah. There it is. There's, there's, as the you piece. say, the monster. <laughs> the monster. Yeah. So, of course, it's prototype, and we've got everything hanging off cameras, you know, when we do go out and shoot. So, there's uh, displays up there. There's an extra recorder. We had to have some synchronization boxes strapped onto the whole thing. So, yeah, it was a little bit of a beast to move around. But, you know, oddly enough, we had a fantastic guy. One of the mandates was to get this onto a steady cam rig. We had a fantastic guy that actually, uh, you know, saved my butt, if you will, uh, because we were running out of time that put this rig or the other. We had two cameras, the other rig onto a steady cam and actually manipulated the steady cam around. And he actually had one shot where he was on a Segway uh, with the steady cam <laughs> and got, got a gorgeous shot that's in the movie. Um, wish people could see that. But wow, I wish so, too, out. actually. Yeah. I'd love to see it myself.